Hey guys, so I thought I'd do my review of Alien Isolation a lot closer to the uh, end of the LP, i.e. like right after it, as opposed to uh, like four years down the line where I suddenly one night wake up in a drunken stupor and just go, I should do a review or something, and vomit and fall over my sofa, which just happens occasionally. And so let's do it, let's do a review and sort of general thoughts and feelings around our Alien Isolation. Um, as usual, review will start off looking at sort of uh, the general aesthetics of the game. We're looking at graphically uh, the gameplay, uh, the general sound design, and sort of the story. We'll just look at all four, while following up on some minor thoughts and then general like things like that. Okay, so starting off, what is Alien Isolation? Well, if you watch the LP, you should probably be aware it's a what? Pff, it's amnesia in space, uh, basically using the Alien franchise. Um, you play as Amanda Ripley. You have to basically escape from the space station to Sevastopol. In, in one way or another, while you're being hunted by a variety of nasties such as the alien, the androids, and a few bobs. Sorry, face huggers. Should probably not use slang on words that don't make sense before I've explained things. So yes, that is the general gist of it. Now, it's a good game. Like this start as an overall summary. It's a good game, but it's by no means a perfect game. So let's go in there and pick it to pieces because that's what we do. I'm gonna be pedantic and annoying. Because uh, I can do that now. Aha! I'm not helping it, so I can whine and whinge, but do it in a critically and an analytical manner. That's the plan, anyway. Right then, first of all, let's get down to the cool thing. Aesthetically, how does Alien Isolation look? Wow. I mean, Alien Isolation is probably one of the prettiest games I've ever seen. Um, it's right up on the high end of the spectrum of current graphic cutting edge technology. It looks fantastic. Graphically, there can be no complaints. It is utterly, utterly beautiful. It, the surfaces shine. It, it, you know, the character models, while a little bit weird looking, generally, the characters themselves look a bit odd. It's that whole not quite human look to them. But barring the fact that they're not people, they look great. Like, they're very, very sharp, very clear, and they have all the bits in the right places. So, which is always nice. Uh, the environments themselves look absolutely stunning. The texture quality on everything is incredible. I mean, I didn't do it for the LP, but I, I downsampled a bit, which is where on a PC you essentially put the resolution higher and bring it back down to your screen size. So everything is rendered even sharper than it would before, and this thing runs like a dream. Uh, it's incredibly well optimized. It runs at 60 frames per second solid, even while I was recording. Uh, Google Chrome allowed you to upload in 60 frames per second, so probably about 80% the uh, away for the LP. You may have noticed the speed of the uh, the video looking a bit well, faster, looking like it had been recorded in higher frames. I've always recorded at 60, it's just that YouTube will now upload it from Chrome like that. So that's probably why. It, it really runs amazingly well. Uh, it has what I like to call Dead Space Syndrome when it comes to the graphics, where it can do incredible things with the graphics. The first Dead Space was a beautiful game for the time, even now, in fact. Um, because it's basically a corridor shooter, in a sense that you're not seeing a lot, it's no really big wide open spaces, it can do incredible things and run beautifully. You can do crazy explosions and particle effects and dust in the air when you're only rendering about 10 feet a corridor, and that's it really worked for it. Um, gen I mean, like... The biggest thing, other than just the general texture detail, but, I mean, I have to give credit to Creative Assembly, the makers of the game, the, the texture detail is incredible. It really is good. Like, some of the best work I've ever seen. Really good stuff. But, the most impressive thing about it is how it looks like 70s sci-fi. They took the Alien film, and the way that sort of clunky, grimy kind of looking ship that the Stromo was, uh, and applied it to a sort of, this... 70s futuristic setting that the game uses as well, and just keeps... You could have watched the Alien film, then watched and then played Alien Isolation, and you'd have truly believed they could have been developed side by side, simply because of how uh, everything looks. They perfectly recreated how the, uh, the 70s sort of Alien looked, and like, the attention to detail is incredible. The weird sort of green screen computers, the way everything hums and whirs, everything's kind of crappy, sort of like crappy sci-fi, or I guess there's a proper word for it, low-tech sci-fi. But, yeah, it was it was this beautiful low-tech universe, and you believed it. You really believed you were there and sort of in that. I mean, no faults at all. It was fantastic. The alien, okay, now Bruce, the alien, looks absolutely amazing. He slash she looks like, as you would imagine from the first film, like this huge hulking destroyer, this massive sort of sleek design, this long tail flipping and flapping everywhere, and that sort of smooth domed head that looks suspiciously like a phallus, sort of penis -y kind of shape. Everything about it looks perfect. It could have been, again, taken directly from the film. You could have had that seven-foot-tall actor guy sat in a suit, and you would have believed it. It really looked the part. 
In fact, it looked better than the part because this thing was f so acrobatic. It flipped up into vents, it scooted around the walls, you know, and it did its own little thing, which you couldn't have done in the film. But of course, we've seen in previous the sort of uh, f sort of footage after the first film that they can do that. But hey, it looked oh, I mean, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. I mean, the alien, of course, is the big draw of the game, and I think 100% really got it down. I believe that was the alien from Alien. I know it's not the same one, but you know what I mean? I, I believe that was a proper alien. It was sturdy, it was strong, it was dangerous, fast, it was creepy. And, you know, it always felt, you always felt oppressed, you were getting hunted, you th this thing really wanted you, you know? And you got that from just, just the way it looked and moved. They got it. They got it. A star, you know, perfect. No faults. Um, so, yeah, I mean, graphically, no, no, there are no, you can't have any complaints graphically. I think it looks absolutely wonderful. Uh, I don't know how the console versions look, but for the PC, pff, beautiful. Um, moving on to, rather than sort of peeing on it before I get, get all the praise out of the way, let's move on to the sound design. Again, sound design, same things before. Everything sounds just as it, you would imagine it would from this 70s sci-fi look. Things go beep, things go bloop, there's explosions, there's fire, everything sounds as you would. The alien, of course, sounds creepy, there's dripping noises, the sort of whooshing noises of the engines and stuff. Um, I'm going to add this to sound design because it annoyed me. The audio logs, while well acted, were irritating. The same as they always are irritating. You can't focus on what you're doing when you have to listen to an audio log. Either stick it in a separate menu where I've got text and can read it. Which, actually, I think they did. Okay, to be fair. Or you know, just don't you know, just do not do it. I think the whole moving away from the audio log thing, not, not a good plan. Uh, that's a personal preference, I think, rather than the fault for the game. I just find the whole audio log thing very irritating when you're trying to avoid an alien. I mean... The thing that ran through my mind is, does the sound of the audio log attract the alien? They've said that all sound does, and it doesn't. Which kind of takes you out of it a bit. You know, you can play these tapes and the alien doesn't bat an eyelid, which is weird. Um, not sure about that. So yeah, bit of a bummer on that on that front. Uh, but the rest of the sound design, again, there isn't an awful lot of uh, sort of things to say about it really. Everything clunks and clanks in the right way. You believe you're there. Uh, the sound effects are all believable. The alien again sounds great, just as you'd imagine, and as it sounds from the movies, perfect. Uh, the only thing I did have a problem with, um, the music, it was inappropriate at places, like you suddenly got like weird electric guitar or techno or funk, and it just doesn't make any sense where it's either something's happening, or nothing's happening, and you're getting this weird music. Um, it likes the scare chord music as well, happens a lot when nothing's happening, or maybe you've missed something, you're supposed to see something, didn't work particularly well. I'm guessing it's dynamic, in the sense that... Bruce was around, and it thought, oh, you're about to see Bruce, this is going to need some tenty music, but did, he didn't show up for whatever reason, I got bored, or saw a salad in the vent and wanted to go get some munch, and yeah, that was that. So, I mean, it's not a massive complaint, it's just a bit odd. Um, I honestly think the game, a lot of the time, would have been better without any sort of music. Almost Dark Souls-esque in the sense that um, there's nothing more tense than all you can hear is that big lumbering asshole outside trying to do you in, and I think that would have helped. The music takes away from that because you're sort of focusing on, ooh, music's scary. Um, now, that's not that's not a blanket statement for all horror games. I think things like Silent Hill are massively improved, and the atmosphere is improved by the music itself, but for this, I feel that just hearing the alien would have been a better better thing. Okay, uh, moving on to the, the big sort of crutch where I'm going to whinge a bit. The gameplay. Now, as a general shtick, Alien works really well. Uh, the general gist of it, of course, there is something hunting you, you're trying to avoid it. I mean, this is a premise has been around since Clock Tower or Haunting Ground, you know. Um, you've got a hunter, you're trying to not be seen. You can hide under things, get away from it, you know, and use a variety of tools at your disposal to try and trick it or fool it. Not be it noise, uh, noise balance, uh, noise making machines or explosions or anything. Now, that's all fine. Uh, the only problem is that will only work for so long before one, it gets irritating, two, it gets not the scare sort of goes. An alien deals with that in a few different ways. It deals with it in the sense you don't always have the same threat. Uh, it's not always Bruce. It's either humans or it's androids or other little scurrying pitter patter assholes. Um, or you've got um, that. That's the sort of like the main way it sort of staves, staves itself off, I suppose. Or it throws you in something new or entirely different. You've got this whole uh, visiting the space jockey ship, for example, and it like gives you something completely new to focus on. And then the scares can rebuild afresh when you come back to it. I honestly feel that the way I record the LP, of course, is every other day or every three days or so, I do a segment. I feel this game is not built for that. I feel it's built for you to sit there in a few days of one big go to just get it over and done with. I feel that coming back to it after periods of time, it means it loses its impact of the scares and things. Uh, but that's, again, not a fault of the game, it's more a fault of the way I was playing it. 
Um, yeah, so, that, like I said, you've got... The, your main premise is, of course, avoiding avoiding the hunter. Now, in this case, the hunter is the alien, which is really cool, but the problem is that he's taking the alien away and putting it with other things. And again, like I explained, it makes sense because it wants to keep something new and keep everything fresh, but the problem is, essentially, you know what you're getting when you buy the packet, you're getting the alien. Now, when the alien's not around, you almost feel, like, short-changed a bit. It's a bit tedious. It's like, why is the alien not here? I want to see Bruce. Instead, you've got these androids, you've got these humans, which just aren't very interesting. I can see androids are humans and anything. The androids are sort of threatening before you can deal with them. They're kind of spooky with the glowing eyes and, you know, the very nonchalant way they talk. That's kind of spooky. The humans are just fodder and just irritating. The humans just get in the way, and the gunplay in the game is a bit naff, so that's a bit annoying. You either take them out, you try and avoid them, or blow them up, whatever. Blah, 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 humans, dull. Um, I think come for the humans, honestly. You humans suck, go away, please. Uh, again, the androids just... When you can start dealing with the androids, they obviously chuck them in the suits, and they just get a bit more irritating to deal with, but... Thing is, when the androids are out, Bruce, 50-50% 50, 50 of the time, isn't. So you can either run past them or ignore them. I do try not to do that in the LP, but a few times off camera when I was doing things, I could literally just run through an entire area, pick up the goods, run back. And that would have solved the problem with the androids, because they don't run after you, they don't chase you, they just slowly walk. And it's not very threatening. And once you realise that, all the scares are gone with the androids. Uh, and that comes to sort of the main, other main problem with, like, sort of having the, the very limited enemy types. Humans are dumb. Humans are extraordinarily dumb. They stand in cover and shoot until the alien eats them, which is stupid, but whatever. They shoot you occasionally, or you can shoot them, but they don't really move. They're not very threatening. Uh, they're not very interesting. Uh, the androids, like I said, main problem, they're not scary because you can just run away from them. Uh, and Bruce, his AI is a bit dumb. On normal, the AI is a bit dim. Uh, everyone's told me that hard is a bit of a different case. I played through about two, three hours on hard separately uh, yesterday. And... Um, well, I wouldn't say it's massively improved. He kills you a bit quicker, sure. You can't get away with things like you would, like the flamethrower or whatever. But generally, eh, it's not, he's not particularly any smarter. You can still fool him with like walking around sofas and stuff. His line of vision is very limited. And again, once you realise this, you saw it in a few of the later sets, you can literally just sort of hop between sofas. Or later on, deal with him with the flamethrower just to get him to shoo away. Uh, the flamethrower on hard doesn't work as efficiently, I have to be honest. And he's a bit more aware of where you hide. But again, if you're careful in the way you walk around the scenery, uh, you can avoid him quite easily. Uh, but that's more gaming the game a bit, which is not really what you want to do to have fun. But uh, hey, that's just what I'd better mention it regardless. Coming to my other problem with the gameplay. Uh, since you're playing Space Amnesia and your goal is to get from A to B, the game impedes your progress from A to B as much as humanly possible. You can't get to A to B because... Uh, th let's use a perfect example of one of the ending rooms. Now, you need to get through this room. It is a big room. Fair enough. Uh, you've got like a line in the middle of the room which you can't go across, and a few objects. Now you get to the end of the room to try and escape. You can't do that, you have to wait for the alien. The alien does his little busy for a bit. He's scripted in this case. He turns up, he goes rawr. He walks around, you hover around the sofa because he can't see over the sofa for whatever reason, it's blocked his line of sight. So he goes rawr rawr, about five minutes of that, and he zips off into the vent. Fair enough, he doesn't seem to come back either, unless you make a bit of noise. So you go to the end of the room. Now, the end of the room is blocked by a forklift truck. Okay, need to lift the truck. No power to the truck. Okay, let's go look at the power. You can't turn the power on because you need a keycard. Okay, where do I get the keycard? The keycard's in a locked cabinet. Okay, how do I get into the locked cabinet? There's a computer by the forklift truck. Okay, I'll have a look into that. It gives you the code for the cabinet. Okay, cool. Use the code on the cabinet. Get the key. Use the key on the generator. Turn the generator on. Push the button on the thingy. Uh, the forklift truck lifts it up. You spent a long time in this room simply to get past something that Ripley honestly could have crawled through or jumped over or walked around, you know? It's impeding progress and padding for the sake of it, and that comes to my big problem with the game, is padding. This game would have been beautiful at 6 hours. It didn't need to be 13, 14 hours long. 6 hours means you could have had less android sections, less humans, and more focus on Bruce and the alien and some of the cool HR Giga stuff it was throwing at you. You could appreciate it a lot more, I feel, before without feeling like, ugh, I'm just trudging through some stuff where nothing's happening and it's really dull. And while it's pretty and stuff's happening, like the aliens here, it's just not very interesting. It shows you so much of Sylvester Paul and you think that's cool, and it makes you do so much backtracking, but at the end of the day, it's just not interesting backtracking. It's not interesting exploration. It's, well, it's not real exploration. You're led upon A to B everywhere. You're told where to go. You're not really exploring around the ship. This isn't System Shock. You aren't taking lifts to different areas, having to look around. This is simply go to A to B, speak to plot important character who inevitably snuffs it, move to, from B to C, move speak to another character, you know what I mean? And that's where the crux of the problem comes in, because it's not interesting. 
But what is interesting is when you're being hunted and there's like you're trying to get, get the key in the middle of a center, like the medical center, and oh, the Bruce is here, and oh my god, the stuff happening. But then when you're just trudging around, that's not cool. And the trudging around would be less noticeable and less problematic. And even if there just wasn't as much content. And it's bizarre to sort of say to like uh, a group of people who are going to spend money on something, or I'm trying to say, do you want to spend money on this? By saying the game has too much content. Which is, again, it's really weird. Like, saying something has too much content just seems just bizarre. Like, what are you doing? It's good, content is good, but sometimes content just for the sake of content is crap. You can write a five-page essay on, like, what you thought about To Kill a Mockingbird. You can write a 50-page essay on it, but if all the words are filled with blah, 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 it's not going to be very interesting to read, is it? And you're going to get a zero, and they're going to laugh at you, mock you, and kick you out of school, and then tell you to not fiddle with the word counts. So... That's what you're looking at here. You're looking at something that could have been five pages, but ended up being fifty pages, but being just full of crap. It's just silly stuff, and it feels like I feel like I'm doing the game a disservice here a bit um, because the game is good, but it's just too much stuff in it that just isn't relevant. It really isn't. Uh, it. I don't know. I'm trying to think of another a gaming comparison I can make. Uh, any of you who've played Tales of the Abyss? It's an RPG. It's one of my favourites, in fact, from the Tales of series. But the third, ha- the third portion of the game is just padding. It could have done everything in about an hour, and so it takes you like ten. Just there's just nothing happening except you're going back and forth over the same areas where nothing's going on, or you're finding out very arbitrary stuff that could have been covered in like seriously, someone going through the script with a pair of scissors, and that's what happened here. Someone said we must put on the back of the box this game is 15 hours long. Make it so, and they did that by padding it and making you go weird ways and make sure you can never get to A to B. The p- uh, I suppose to stop rambling, that like my review is a perfect example of what's wrong with Alien. There's too much stuff in it. Um, that's what happens when you don't script stuff. Anyway, pacing is the problem here. A better paced game would have been a better experience for everybody. This game is not well paced. There are too many sections where the alien isn't the focus, and you have the androids or something, and it's dull as shit. Honestly, that's the problem. Um, the rest, and again, that is while it's a major problem. Saying something has too much content is probably a personal thing as well. So I still can heartily recommend the game simply because I think, I while I think there's too much content, I think it's badly paced. Lots of people love the fact there's so much to do, and so much to sort of like so much content in there. I think it's fluff and crap, but someone else may not. But I suppose that's the sort of crux of opinions, really. Getting to the point, then, Alien is a good game. Uh, the premise is interesting. The gameplay is interesting albeit too much stuff of it, and the way it's done its horror is fantastic. Like, the whole stalking aspect and the hunting aspect is great. I didn't really go over the story, and that's another problem. The story doesn't matter. The story isn't interesting. It Ripley's there to sort of look for a message from the Nostromo. Well, if anything, you forget about the story, or even why you're on the Nostro- uh, why you're on Sylvester Pol after about an hour. It doesn't matter, because it's not the focus. The focus is the big penis-shaped man on the box. It's Bruce. He's the focus here, and... That's what's important. The story and all the other stuff kind of falls apart and falls to the wayside, really, because it doesn't matter. You've got a game that perfectly replicates the sort of the look and feel and sort of hunting f- f- sensation of the first film, of Alien, and that's that's what you pay for and that's what you get, and it's great. And because of that, it's still I can still heartily recommend it. I I will still say yes, it is worth your money. Yes, it is worth playing, if alone for the atmosphere and how it looks and just how it plays. You will, at the end, honestly, I think, at the end of it, think, Jesus, that was a slog. I've had enough. But those first, those you know, first six, seven hours are magical. And the game, no game has done sort of the sort of terror and, like, horror you feel simply for the fact that something's hunting you better than this since, like, Penumbra, for me. I found Amnesia decent, but I found Penumbra better in that sense. Um, and I think that was, really was impressive. Oh, well, I've got a pet peeve. S- since we're here, don't load you up with like tons of stuff and make the alien bulletproof. It's just silly. Seeing the alien take tons and tons of damage or getting set on fire but not dying is just weird. They, they could have worked out a better way of doing that. I don't know. Maybe like those psychopaths guns where you point it at the alien and it won't fire because it doesn't register it as a person or something. Who knows. Either way, thank you for listening to my lumbling, uh, like sort of rumbling on review. Um, I am starting a new LP. It will be after Christmas, obviously, because uh, it's the 23rd today and balls on my starting something before Christmas would be silly. I'm not even here. Um, and it's going to be The Evil Within. So uh, I hope you all will be looking forward to that, and I will see you all after Christmas.
So, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, or whatever, whatever, whatever. Thank you for listening to this review. Leave, please, like, let, let me th- leave your own thoughts about Alien. Leave your thoughts about the LP. Leave your thoughts about the game, etc., etc. And I've lambled on for twenty minutes. Jeez, God, I'm sorry. That's awful. Um, I said, if I made these a podcast, at least you guys could do something interesting while listening to me ramble on. Either way, thank you very much, guys and gals. Toodles.